Okay, guys, the call is going to be recorded. Uh, can you see my screen? Okay, so guys, because I'm not seeing you, please give me uh, feedback by voice. Okay. Okay, just to mention there is a little utility here which tells us which key I'm pushing at this time. So for your reference, I'm clicking the left mouse button, for example, the right mouse button over here. So you can see which button I'm pushing at every time. Okay, so when once you open uh, Fusion 360, <coughs> this is the main screen that uh, comes out of it. The first thing that you should notice is that this is divided in two parts. So on the right side, we have our uh, um, uh, design space with our palette of tools and commands and so on. But on the left side, we have um, our uh, cloud management system where we have different uh, projects and files that can be hosted uh, on it. Guys, can somebody mute because there is a lot of noise that comes to me. All right, so uh, in this space over here, um, you will see all the data that you have saved about your, uh, your, your projects. So for example, here you can create uh, a new project, for example, test. <coughs> you can uh, rename a, a project, for example, right click rename, this becomes a uh, test one over here. Uh, you can uh, cache this project, which means uh, you can download uh, all the data of this project to your local computer. Uh, you can uh, keep working on it also um, uh, locally without uh, having the use of internet. And then you can also have archive, which means you sort of delete your, your project. Your project will not be anymore available uh, here. Um, but will be uh, then saved uh, in a long-term storage archive that you can uh, retake uh, afterwards. So apart from, uh, from this panel over here on the bottom, there is another section which is about uh, libraries and samples. So here you can find different assets uh, that you can use, templates, libraries, configuration files, and so on. Uh, here you can find lots of tutorials and examples uh, as well about how to use uh, Fusion 360 and so on. All right, <clears throat> um, so I created a, a folder um, here uh, about Fab Academy. Um, I will share this folder with you. There are uh, different examples. Uh, as you can see, once you are inside a project, you will see that you have different files uh, inside this project. So each of these uh, files can be a single uh, design or a combination uh, or aggregation, for example, or, or designs of designs. So whenever you create your, uh, your project and start saving it, uh, Fusion works a little bit like uh, also Git. So it has uh, its own built-in uh, control version system. So if you click, for example, on, on this uh, version number over here, you can see the um, older versions that you have saved. For example, you can see the old seven version that I made. And then for each of these versions, you have the date, the time, where it is saved, but you can also uh, open it or you can also promote it. So you can see, you can say, okay, this one will become my main design. So I will put this on top of it, will become the one that I open once I double click on the file, or you can just open this one, for example, to check the, the modifications. Here you can see also in case this uses other parts or it's used in other designs or is connected to any of the drawings. Um, so drawings just briefly are like uh, sheets that you use to uh, define this, the dimensions of a part before going to a shop to manufacture the part. Okay, inside a, <coughs> a project, you can, for example, create a new folder, as I did for, for our lecture today. Uh, you can upload existing designs. Uh, so the uploading works with uh, different kinds of uh, file formats. Here you can see the file formats that are compatible uh, as uh, inputs, as importing. You can see there are formats about like the old AutoCAD files, of course, Fusion files, also um, quite generic uh, uh, IGES file, or for example, uh, step files or OBJ files, step files over here, Rhino files. It also imports um, uh, some designs from SOLIDWORKS, for example, or other uh, here, 
as you can see. Uh, and then it tries to import this in the format of, of Fusion 360. So it's really compatible with lots of formats uh, in input over here. All right, so <clears throat> um, as I already mentioned, Fusion is a software that works uh, in the cloud because all of this is hosted in the cloud. So once you double click on, on, a, on, a, on a file, this will be open and then you will have this uh, locally in your computer. Um, so on the top right, you can see your account icon that you can use to, for example, sign on and sign out from, from your account. You can see your preferences and so on. Uh, but here in this job status, you can see if you are working online or if you are working offline. So it's recommended to have, because it's a cloud-based software, uh, online connection. But uh, of course, you can also work offline as long you cache uh, the the uh, the files. So it's a little bit slower when you work offline, at least the beginning. But then, if things are cached, you can work uh, directly offline. So here you have an extension manager where you can uh, add a different uh, extension. So uh, Fusion, uh, in a similar way, maybe to other software, uh, it's compatible with uh, several different extensions. Uh, there are the no extensions for specific kind of mailing operations, uh, 3D printing, uh, specific features, for example, creating a bill of material as I use myself, um, and so forth. So uh, some of these are free. Some others are, are, are um, 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 something that you need to pay with credits, okay? So here you receive some notifications, uh, tips, and so on about, about Fusion. So Fusion updates also really often. So sometimes you will see that here there is like a little update uh, percentage bar, and then uh, you need to wait, it's recommended to wait that this will be updated and then Fusion restarts, and then um, it's, uh, it's ready to work. Sometimes, if you have an old file, this is compatible only with the old changes. Um, so with the old version of Fusion, but Fusion once updates, it updates also all the versions of the files to the latest version of Fusion. So you're ne never going to have incompatibility between the file formats that you have in, in Fusion. Okay, let's have a look to our uh, uh, design uh, section of Fusion. So you can, for example, collapse this one uh, over here uh, and then here uh, we can see that we have the typical so if you want to have the data panel back you click on this one you have the typical menu like file where you can create a new design um, you can for example export this current design uh, into another file and other options that you are free to explore uh, and this of course is just to save and then back and forth over here so as Neil mentioned multiple times, one a really good feature of Fusion, as the name says, is the integration of different uh, workbenches and different uh, workflows, uh, for especially for 3D design or, uh, uh, for example, machining and so on. So the first workbench um, that we are going to look at is the design workbench, and it's used to design basically your, uh, your parts. Uh, inside this workbench, we will see there are some sub workbenches, some sub areas that you can use for different applications. Then we have uh, a recently added generative design uh, workspace. Uh, this one basically you have a design and then you uh, apply some set of constraints and then this design will be ready made for manufacturing with different technologies. For example, as you can see here, there can be like manufactured with, I don't know, milling or uh, metal 3D printing uh, and so on. You have, of course, the render uh, workspace, which is used to create realistic renderings, so representations of, of your object. We will see there are some limitations on this uh, workbench uh, later on. So uh, you have, of course, also a section about animation where you can animate uh, your, your drawings, your 3D models, so you can create explosions, for example, of your, of your uh, mechanical assembly. Uh, to show how it's made inside uh, and so on. You can record then a movie out of it and you can save the movie then locally into your computer so, or, a, or a video. You have simulation which, which works with um, um, the parts that you have designed and takes into consideration, for example, the materials that you have used and the forces that are involved and then gives you uh, uh, a, a simulation of what could be, for example, the bending of the material according to a specific context or situation. You have the manufacturer workbench, which is uh, dedicated for the manufacturing of the parts. And this is uh, not just dedicated to, to milling. You can also fi find um, 
um, specific tools for, uh, for, um, uh, for example, drilling or for lathe machining uh, or for 3D printing or even for plasma cutting and laser cutting. And last, we have drawings, which is uh, basically a PDF sheet where you can uh, place your design and you can quote the dimensions and so on. And this is uh, rather useful when you want to fabricate, when you want to uh, send your design for fabrication uh, to, for example, a, a mechanical shop that has CNC machines to produce. Okay, that being said, we will start with the um, design workbench and uh, we will have a look to what we can do in this, in this section. So here you will see you have different uh, tools that you can use to start working on your design. I will briefly try to go in almost uh, all of those and we will start with a, a sketch uh, workbench. Guys, guys, without saying that you can interrupt me anytime if you have a question. Okay, so the, the sketch workbench allows us to create sketches. You can think of sketches as two-dimensional uh, designs and these two-dimensional designs can be applied to any flat uh, plane. So. Well, once you create a sketch, Fusion asks you, okay, uh, where you want to create this sketch? You have, for example, these uh, basic planes of the origin point. But of course, in case you have already a solid, you can create this on top of a surface of a solid, for example. So I will select the uh, top plane over here. And you can see that Fusion automatically uh, brings uh, the view uh, in, this, uh, in this way. So let's have a look to how we can interact with our... Um, uh, design grid over here so we can for example use the mouse wheel to zoom in and zoom out and here you can see that fusion automatically adjusts the the grid uh, according to the zoom we are in we can use the middle mouse button to pan uh, our design and then we can use the shift uh, left shift of the keyboard and the middle mouse button to have a perspective view to be noted that once we do this, also this cube will rotate. So if you are um, not comfortable with this uh, way of uh, using the keyboard and the mouse, you can also directly drag the cube with the uh, left mouse button like this, or you can click on any of these um, uh, arrows and faces of the cube to have your, uh, your uh, 45 degree view, for example, top view, back view, and so on. If you are lost at some point, you can push the home button and this goes back to the home button. Okay, so I will create, I uh, will click back on top and then it will be here on top, um, looking uh, at the top, the top plane. Okay, you have seen that once we clicked on the sketch, this uh, toolbar has been changed and uh, those are the specific commands that you can use in the, in the sketches. So one way to interact with this is to click on this um, uh, shortcut buttons, which are basically just a subset of the whole commands that you can find here in the in the menu. So Fusion will automatically change those according to the one that you use the most, or you can say, for example, according to one specific command that you use more often, pin to toolbar, so pin to shortcut, so you can bring it on top uh, as you wish. Okay, but let's create a line. So I click here with the left mouse button, and I click another point here and then I click another point here and then I push escape to finish the command. So this is my first line that I have created. So it's a very simple way of creating a line. So you can see that if you click on this line on the bottom side you can see also some additional information. Okay this is a sketch line <clears throat> and the length of this is for example 66.965 uh, millimeters over here. So how I can yes Ah, okay, thank you very much. You mean the sketch palette? Yeah, okay, so let me just uh, do this, which will be stop streaming. Thank you, Ferdi, because I really don't see this from here. So I will share the old screen, and now you see it. Oh, sorry, okay, thank you, Ferdi, for this. Yes. The sketch. Yeah. 
Okay, so if you if you click on create sketch, before anything happens, you need to select a plane where you want to create a sketch. So until you don't click on the plane that you wanna select, nothing happens. So for example, I'm I can rotate the view a little bit like this. And then you see you have these three planes, the basic planes from the origin. For example, I select this plane here. And once you select it, then you have here your toolbar for the sketches. All right, so <clears throat> I was telling you I was creating a line. So I can uh, click directly on this command line and then I can click on two points. And then with the escape uh, key, I can uh, close the command and hand the command and then I have my, my line over here. I was telling you guys, you go just to the bottom right, you can see some specification like the length of the line. So why we can create lines uh, freehand, so you just click one point, another point, and then escape, and this is another line. Uh, to delete a line, you can push the cancel button, yeah, and this will delete the line. Or we can create the line giving to Fusion some specific parameters. So if you, for example, click on any point and then you don't click on the second point, you can see that there are two specifications for the line. <coughs> For example, here you can input a specific distance, for example, 50 millimeters. And here you can input a specific angle. If you push on the tab button, you can switch uh, between the two um, um, fields. And then here you can push, for example, you can click, you can say 45 degree, and then this create a line, which is um, of a length of 50 millimeters with an angle of 45 degree from this uh, horizontal construction line. So as you can see now, Fusion added a few symbols to, to the design itself, uh, which are not part of the design, but they are uh, there to, to help you. Of course, the symbols are like the distance and angle. And these are, of course, something that you can change as you wish. For example, 75 and 30 degrees. Over here, just double click on them and you have them. But more important, <coughs> it created also some uh, uh, other things. For example, it created this uh, construction line over here and this constraint over here. So we will see that uh, the construction lines are lines that are not uh, appearing in your final design, but they're just lines that you use to construct something. And you can recognize them because they are dashed over here. And these blue lines instead are the lines that are appearing in your design. Also, these icons here are representing constraints. So the constraints are special um, uh, limitations that you apply to your design in order to fit your, uh, your needs. And we will see there are different kinds of, of constraints uh, that we can use. So before we go to the, to the constraints, I um, will briefly show you a little bit of the comments that we have here. Um, in a similar way that I create a line, uh, I can create a rectangle with different ways. For example, center, point, three point rectangle, um, rectangles, two points, and so on. So this is a center rectangle here. You can, of course, specify the distances over here, and you have your rectangle here. And then you can change it as we did for the line. So um, you have also um, different ways of uh, selection. So for example, if you create a single line, you just click on the line, <coughs> and then you see it's thicker. This means it's selected over here. Uh, you can do the same with the lines of the um, rectangle over here. An easy way to select all the lines of the rectangle in case you have uh, contiguous lines is that you just double click on the lines and then you have the all lines selected. Another way that you can use to select the lines is to use this uh, rectangle selection. So if you go from uh, the left to the right you have a continuous line and the continuous line will select everything that is inside completely inside the selection. So in this case, I will select, for example, this line. You see, it's selected. But if I do a selection like this, then this is not completely inside the selection. So this means it will not be selected like this. So I will only select this point over here. Another way of making the selection is you go from uh, the right to the left, and you have this dashed line selection. With the dashed line selection, uh, everything that goes inside the selection will be selected. So if I just uh, have a little bit of the line inside, 
then this selects the old line over here. Okay. So this was the rectangle. I mean, the other commands are rather similar. I recommend you to just explore them. You have, for example, a circle command, and then you can just say, okay, I want 20 millimeter circle over here. <coughs> okay. Um, you have different ways, of course, of designing the circles. Uh, similar way you can design the arcs. So you have like three points arcs uh, over here. So feel free to explore uh, all of these uh, commands over here. So we have, of course, a spline, uh, slots, ellipse, polygons, where you can specify the number of the, of the sides, um, and so on. You can also draw single points, and you can also, of course, have uh, text. So, for example, sample text. So with text, you have this menu uh, that is a little bit uh, uh, giving you the parameters of the, of the text that you want to write. So if a command in Fusion, it's something simple, nothing will appear. You just click on the command and you, you execute the command here. So for example, draw a line. But if something is more complex, then these pop-ups will appear. And here you can see that you have, for example, the specification of the text. Okay, I want to have it bold, I want to have it uh, italic, I want to change the font uh, over here with other fonts, uh, and so on. So. All right. <clears throat> Um, so another important thing to consider is the following. You can draw whatever you want by hand, like this over here, but then uh, uh, what you can do is um, you can uh, uh, add a dimension later to it. So or you either uh, add a dimension when you create your object or you can add a dimension later. So you click on D, here is the shortcut D, or you can click on this menu section, which is the sketch dimension. Then you go here, you select, okay, I want to have this aligned or linear dimension. For example, I, I want the aligned one. And then this becomes 45, and then I can change it afterwards. Okay, Okay. so let's have a look to some of the transformations, basic transformations. So we create, you have here uh, the creation of the objects. So those are the objects up to text that you can create. <coughs> But you can also, of course, use some specific ways of creating uh, the things. So let's uh, have a quick look on, on, on some of those. So for example, I uh, can create a, a circle, okay, like this, and I will make it 10. And then, for example, I can say I um, um, want to have a pattern of objects. So you can have, for example, a circular pattern or a rectangular pattern. So for the uh, circular pattern, it's convenient to have a center. So for example, what you can do is you can create a line. For example, I want to have a radius of 50 here. And then I say, OK, I go to create. I click on circular pattern. <clears throat> and then this pop-up appears. So when this pop-up appears, guys, I recommend you to read them from the top. So the first thing that this wants uh, are the objects that you want to have in the pattern. So you click on this. this you see this is blue. So this means please uh, select the object according to the, to, the, to the field here, to the label, so objects. So click here. Then I click, for example, on the second selection, which now is blue, and it asks me the center point. So I will click on this center point over here. And then here you have, for example, the angle. You want to do the circular pattern. It can be full or a specific angle or symmetric. And then here you have, for example, the number of the objects. Yeah. And then if you push OK, we have created our circular pattern over here. So in a similar way, we can create uh, our rectangular pattern, <coughs> which is over here. So rectangular pattern, it takes still an object. Um, then, for example, if you just uh, drag these arrows, you can see you are creating already some objects. You can also select the directions, uh, so it can be only one direction, for example. Um, the distance can be by extension, so this means the total extension, uh, or you can have also by spacing. So you want to say, for example, uh, the spacing between those is uh, 15. For example, the space between these ones is uh, 20, for example, and so on. And then with this, you can increase the numbers of the object that you want. So you can do this by just uh, selecting this arrow, which is blue. So we are working on the right side. Or you select this arrow, 
and we're working the top side and then you can increase this number over here of course the, all of these things can be done here so you can change this distance automatically from here uh, or from here for example you can also specify if you want to have this in one direction or with this sign metric so you have one on the right and one on the left for example uh, objects in a second um, yeah, so feel free to explore the, the um, rectangular pattern. All right, then of course we have mirror. So I'm going to design like a line and then I'm going to design, for example, another line over here. And then <coughs> we can make a mirror of this line. So here is the mirror command. So for the mirror command, you uh, always need to specify two different objects. So one are the object that you want to mirror. And the other one is the reference line for mirroring. So we are doing everything in 2D now. So the reference is just a line. In case we do a mirror in 3D, then the reference will be a plane. So for example, we created this one over here and we have this uh, created over here. Okay, so and we have our mirror. All right, so, <clears throat> um, so we explored a little bit of the tools that we have to create simple objects of the uh, simple pattern and mirror commands for creation and then you have different kinds of uh, transformations and modifications of for your for your objects so let's observe uh, the most important of them so i will create such of uh, an anglet um, design between two lines so uh, you can then click on fill it here and then if you select this line over here and you select this other line over here you can create a fillet. If you specify the fillet, for example, this fillet is 15, you see this, <coughs> create this uh, 15 here, and then you go here, and then you can change this later, and so on. You can also delete the dimension with just cancel here, and then, of course, if you go back and create sketch dimension, you can, of course, get back your dimension. So this is 11, for example, over here, and so on. So we have, of course, uh, trim and extend. So I can create two lines like these, or I can create a circle, for example, like these. And then I can say, OK, modify trim. And then I can delete uh, um, the line that is trimmed by, for example, the intersection between two lines or, or uh, the circle and the lines and so on. So for example, if I click on this red one here, I trim this one, if I click this one, I trim this one, and I remove this, these lines over here. I can trim, for example, this section of the circle uh, over here. So, <clears throat> so this was the trimming. Um, so then we have extend and break. So the extend, it's uh, something powerful that you may need, for example, to extend a specific line up to a specific point. So let's design, for example, two lines like this. So if you click on modify extend, <clears throat> and then you click on the line that you want to extend, then Fusion 360 uses the next reference point to extend your line. So for example, this one will be extended up to this line over here, as you can see. So then if you keep extending this, the next reference point is the next line over here. So this will extend this line over here. So now this becomes one complete line. <clears throat> and then you can, of course, trim this side to have the, the line as you had before and so on. So you can uh, also use the break command, which is uh, uh, similar to trim. But uh, the difference is that it doesn't delete uh, the line. It just bre breaks it. So if you click on break and then for example you click on this intersection you see you can uh, break the uh, this line or you can break this more vertical line over here according to which one do you select so i will break this line over here and now, now you can see that you have two different lines one here and one here okay and then you can delete these lines over here Okay, then of course we have uh, sketch uh, scale. Um, so for example, let's create uh, a simple rectangle here and we make this uh, 10, for example, by five over here. So of course you can just change this and say, okay, here will become 20, for example, and this will become five, uh, 10, sorry, 
and then you scale it some sort uh, in, in some way you design. Um, but you can of course go on scale, scale and then you select the object that you want to scale, for example, for entities, so these this lines over here, and then you can select a point, and then here you can scale your, your design. You can also input here the scale factor, uh, for example, you know, 0 0.5, like this, or 1 or 2, or whatever you think. Okay, and then you have your scale sketch uh, over here. All right, another important um, modification, uh, really powerful also in, in in Fusion is to um, to have an offset. So let's, for example, create a spline. <clears throat> so a spline is basically a curved line. Uh, you can have it through points um, that passes through some points of fit points lines, or you can have it that you can use some reference points, but the the, the spline will not pass from that points. So we will use a fit point uh, spline, for example, like this. You can hand the spline, for example, by, uh, let's make maybe a little bit more complex spline like this. You can end the command just by double clicking. So this is your spline. To be noted that you can modify your spline by uh, using these control points over here, or you can also have the point directly on top of the, of the spline. Yeah, so um, offset just creates an offset um, from a specific set of lines. So in this case, for example, if you click on offset, we can select the, the spline here, and this automatically creates an offset from the spline. So take care, guys, that this, this uh, offset over here, it's taking into consideration the shape that you are offsetting, and it's bringing with the within the offset some of the specification of it, and it's rearranging some calculations, like this, this corner over here becomes like sharp, you know? <clears throat> so it's not offsetting just the exact uh, same shape. All right, so then you can push OK, for example, and this is your, your offset uh, over here. All right, we can, of course, uh, move copy objects, <clears throat> and this could be handy also for the three-dimensional way of moving the things. So, for example, I have here two, two lines. Uh, so you can of course click or modify move copy and then this tells you okay please select the object that you want to move so for example this one <coughs> and then here you can see that this um, arrows come in a hand so you can just uh, drag this arrow and you can move the, the line you can of course rotate the, uh, the line for each of these movements of course you can input a number here, also for the angle, for example, minus 30 degrees, uh, and so on. And all of these fields are also available here <coughs> in this um, small pop-up menu, where you can set those by hand. So you can also say, okay, I don't want to have the rotation, the movement simultaneously, I want to just have the movement, so you can select the second way of moving, which is translate, and this just moves the object. <coughs> You can only rotate the object, you can move uh, point to point the object, I think this is uh, more interesting. So point to point is um, a movement that takes some reference point as origin and as a target. For example, I can say, okay, this is my origin point, and then I go to my target point, which is this one over here. Okay, or you can select, for example, this point over here as a target point. So. It's also worth to be noted that for each of these uh, ways of moving that I've been showing you, you can also create a copy. So if you select on copy, it just selects, for example, this, and then this stays here, and you have created your copy of your of your object. Okay. Um, another easy way of uh, moving the object is just uh, or copying the object is just selecting it and then Control C, Control V, or um, in case you use Windows or Linux, is, uh, okay, Fusion is running Linux. If you, in case you use Mac, it's Command C or Command B. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> so, and with this, we covered a little bit of the the modifications. Um, one thing that we will explore more, um, I think, in the next assignment is that um, if you have here uh, your distances, for example, this one over here. Uh, you will see that in modify you also have change parameters. 
So as uh, Neil was showing for FreeCAD, also Fusion is a parametric design tool. So this means that uh, many of the constraints and features and dimensions of your design can be parameters. <coughs> so the basic way of um, uh, setting the parameters is by uh, using them for the distances, for the lengths of the objects. More advanced uh, way of using the parameters can be, for example, by counting the uh, items in a pattern. For example, you can have a table that has uh, a specific number of feet according to the length of the table, uh, or a gear which has a number, uh, enough number of foot according to the, to the diameter of the gear. So, by the way, if you want to have a quick look to the parameters, <coughs> you can go here and change parameters. And you will see that for this um, sketch, that we have created over here, we have these two parameters. We have, for example, 10 and 5. Um, so if you don't give any specific name to the parameters, they will be named automatically by Fusion. So you have your D14 and D15. Um, and you can change also those from here. So this can become 5. You can see your design has been adjusted to 5 over here. Um, another thing that you can do is you can change the name. <coughs> Okay, so this for me, for example, is the width. It's not D14, so the width is uh, rather more clear to me about the meaning uh, of it and so on. So you can uh, <coughs> define also your own parameters here. For example, you can define the uh, width over here. Of course, Fusion detects if you're using the same name here. So for example, this is red, so you cannot use it. So I would put it back, for example, to D14 over here. I can call this, for example, uh, width over here, and I should enter here an expression, and I should select the units. So, as you can see here, you can use uh, no units, which are, for example, counting numbers. You can have length, angle, currency, luminosity, mass, force, angular resistance, magnetic field, flow rate. It's it's a universe. So. Uh, but we will explore this better, I think, in the next in the next lecture. I will just uh, give here like a value, for example, ten. Over here, I can give this as a I can select this as a favorite here, and then here I can use, for example, uh, instead of ten, I can use, for example, width here. So then this becomes fx here is function of this, and then this becomes uh, ten. Of course, here you can also have. Um, expressions so you can have this is for example 10 times 2 becomes 20 you can correlate this to other parameters uh, and so on so i will conclude here briefly for the for, for the parameters maybe if there is time and guys you want it after this lecture we can also dig into it for now i want to show you just the basics of fusion all right so let's have a look to some to some other important features um, of Fusion, which are the constraints that you can use for your uh, for your uh, sketch lines um, or designs. <clears throat> so all the constraints are here. You can also find the constraints, um, uh, some, some other options about the constraints here, for example, show constraints uh, or not, show dimensions and or not. These are additional options that you can that you can use. Um, here, for example, you have all the different constraints. <clears throat> and you can also access them from, from this drop-down menu. So the first constraints that we have is the horizontal or vertical constraints. So um, I want to show you that you can manipulate the line also by hand if you click on the, on the, on the point. So these all are also control points in a similar way of the spline. So I place the line like this and then I click on horizontal vertical. <clears throat> and Fusion here automatically detects that this is closer to horizontal position. So when I click on this one, this becomes completely horizontal. So I press, press Escape to remove the constraints. And now you can see that whatever thing I do to this line, this line stays um, uh, horizontal. You can, of course, delete the constraints. Just click on it and remove it. And then you can, of course, then... Uh, give me a second. Let's create a new line. Yeah, like this, and then you can uh, reapply the the constraints. So I can, for example, put it like this, and then you have this other constraint. Give me a second. So Fusion has some 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 quirks. Yeah. Okay. And now we have this one horizontal over here. Okay. 
So feel free, guys, to explore the different constraints that are here that are really useful. So, for example, uh, you have the coincident constraint, so you have two points. And for example, I want to say these two points are um, coincidental. Now they are coincidental, and whatever I do to one line, this will stay attached to the other line uh, over there. <coughs> I can also have, uh, for example, a tangent constraint. So I have a line over here uh, and a circle. <coughs> and then here I can click on tangent. So I can click, for example, on this circle and on this line. And you can see now that this icon has been added, which is the uh, tangential um, constraint. And then whatever I do with this line over here, it will always stay tangential. So I can move the line and this will always stay tangential over here. Okay, some more constraints that you can have. So we can create, for example, these two lines like this. It's worth to be mentioned that Fusion attaches some constraints automatically. So I create this line, for example, uh, vertical, and this is automatically created over here. If you create, for example, another line like this, you see another constraint that is perpendicularity has been added over here. So. <clears throat> Um, so the other constraints I want to show you is the equal constraints. So I can uh, tell to Fusion, okay, these two lines have to be the same. So I go here and then I click on this one. These two lines are now the same. So this means that if I increase the length of one line, also the other line will be uh, keeping the same length and so on. So, so those that we're doing are simple combination symbol constraints, like one constraints applied to the old design. But of course, you can change the constraints to have multiple effects. So uh, for example, this is um, a perpendicularity constraint. So I want to say this line should be perpendicular to this one over here. So And this perpendicularity here stays all the time. So in case I move the lines over here. Um, then I can also say, OK, look, I want to um, have these two, of course, coincident, for example, like this one and this one over here, and this becomes coincident over here. So I can uh, go back and I can say, for example, um, this point here should be on the midpoint of this, of this other line over here. So you click on midpoint, then you click on this point over here, then you click on here, and this becomes on the midpoint. Then you can see the two icons here, the triangle for the midpoint and this T for the perpendicularity um, of your design. All right, you can have uh, different kind of other um, constraints. So you can, for example, have two circles, and you can have the concentric. So this means that one will be concentric to the other one, and this will be uh, kept all the time. So for example, I cannot move this one. I can just increase the size. It will always be um, concentric over here. Uh, we can also have the collinear um, um, constraints. So you click, for example, on one of these lines, and then you click on, on the other line. And these lines now are collinear. So no matter where you move them, they will stay uh, collinear. So another constraint which is similar to, to mirror is the symmetric constraints. So for example, with symmetric constraints, we can say we have these, these lines like this, which are different, of course. Um, then we can say symmetry. So symmetry works by selecting three items. So we have to select the uh, line on one side, the line on the other side, and also the uh, symmetry line or the mirror line. And in this case, you can see that those are now having uh, the same uh, angle. So um, now if I move one, the other one will become symmetric to this one as well. So. Of course, again, you can chain the, the uh, constraints. You can say, OK, this one should be uh, equal to this one. For example, you had another constraint on it. Um, you can add the symmetry also to the other line, for example, like this. Yeah, You have to take care, because sometimes Fusion does some uh, additional operations, because it computes the, the constraints, and then some weird thing can happen, like this line was deleted by now. OK, so um, I think one constant that I forgot to show you, but it's also rather easy, is the parallel constraint. So you click on this one. You want to say, OK, this one should be parallel to this one. And these lines now, they will be parallel all the time. All right. Um, another one, the last one, is the curvature 
constraint. <clears throat> the curvature constraint it takes into consideration splines and straight lines in order to 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 have the uh, the spline uh, tangent to the to the straight line. So I will show you a simple example. So let's say that we draw a line like this, <clears throat> and then let's say that we draw a line like this, and then between those we create a spline. So if you go to create and you select spline, for example, fixed point spline. We click on this point, and then we click on this other point, and then we double click to end our our uh, our spline. So then we can say, okay, curvature constraint. So we select this line, then we select this spline. And you can see that this one here, this curve here, has been tangent to this straight line over here. So you can uh, play with this, of course, also with more complex designs. So for example, maybe I will bring this one over here a little bit. So then I will say, okay, this one and this one should have this constant over here. So this has become this constant over here. And this one is still kept, but it made some weird um, curve just to um, be still fit in this, in this constant over here. So. All right, and this was the, the um, curvature uh, constraint. Of course, you can inspect your design. So these are this handy inspect. You can also trigger with I. And this tells you, for example, the length over here. We will see that this will become more complex once you start working with 3D. Uh, you have like uh, area uh, showing or closer loop length and so on. Guys, comments and questions on what we've done since now? Can you give me a voice feedback? Because I remember you, I cannot see you at this moment. Okay, thank you, Uwe. Thank you, all of you guys. Um, so um, one thing that I want to show you also is that once you create in a sketch um, a set of uh, closed lines, what Fusion will do is it will highlight this in bluish. Okay, so if you click on it, you can see that it's a closed surface. For Fusion, closed surfaces are important because they are the basics that you can use for uh, the creation of uh, three-dimensional objects. For example, with a command of extrusion, or a revolving. So uh, you can, of course, uh, create just a closer shape, or if you work with the lines, as long as you can snap onto the last point, then you are creating a closer shape. It's also worth to mention that Fusion has a very powerful snapping system. So whether you create, for example, a line, you know, it's very easy to set it vertical or horizontal because you see the constraints before it's going to be applied over here. But that's also very powerful um, snapping, automatic snapping, because for example, you can see, okay, if you see the X, you snap onto the, onto the line. So your line starts from this. You can see also, if you create a line like this, it creates a 90 degree line with a constraint automatically attached over here. It also indicates you what's the middle point. Okay, this triangle here tells me this is the middle point, which is the same exactly icon of the midpoint um, um, constraints that you have over there. So, and this you will see will also be applied to, uh, to other things also in 3D. So the circle, of course, it keeps the center of the circle. So you can, for example, attach something to the uh, circumference of the circle. You can start from the center of the circle and then attach it to the circumference automatically, for example, and then take the midpoint over here and go over here. So it's it's really a powerful automatic uh, snapping point. All right, well, until now we have been working in 2D and I also uh, would like to say that this is rather similar to what we could find in, in, in SOLIDWORKS or also in FreeCAD, you have very similar constraints that you can apply to, to your design. So once you learn this methodology, you can apply this methodology to other CAD software um, in a similar generic way. So, but now it's time to uh, start working also in, in 3D. So one way that we have to go from 2D to 3D is of course to create uh, extrusions. Uh, to have uh, something that we can extrude, we need to have a closed uh, 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 set of lines or closed surface. So in order to create a closed surface, of course, we can go back to, for example, this one to, to make a rectangle. And then, for example, you can rotate a little bit the view like this, I'm, I'm too much uh, zoomed in, give me a second. Um, 
go back home, yeah, like this, okay. And then, <clears throat> so let's say that you are done with your sketch, you can push and finish sketch. And also what I want to show you is that you have this menu here on the left side, and this menu here shows you the objects that you have been working with. I think this was a previous sketch that I was using, uh, that, uh, that is empty, just before you came in the lecture. This one is the other sketch that I'm using. You can, of course, rename the sketch with your um, identifier name. Uh, you can enable, for example, or disable the sketch, so you can see it uh, or not. Um, if you right click on it, then you can go back and you can edit the sketch as we were doing before. So we are back in the sketch, we push on, on finish sketch. And so maybe just before I go away, uh, for example, I have this, it was very small. So we can see here that you can, for example, show the constraints or not, because sometimes it becomes too much complex. You have thousands of constraints, you just remove them just for seeing everything clear, or show the dimensions over here or show points uh, over here. And maybe I also forgot, uh, but it's something very quick, how to, to, to design uh, construction lines, you just click on this, and then anything you design will become a construction line over here, and then you can remove this here. You can also have center lines over here. All right, but back to extrusions. So once you finish the sketch, the all menu will appear with the three-dimensional tools. And so it's similar to the sketches in create, you find everything to create new objects and modify everything to modify the object. So in create, for example, we can click on extrude, which you can also click uh, by uh, using the shortcut uh, E. So just click on extrude. Um, so we have selected this one, maybe I was selecting this before, so create extrude. Yeah, it's the only one, so Fusion automatically selected it. And then you just, for example, can go up and down with the arrows, specifying here the distance is five, six, whatever you want. Uh, it can be one side, two sides, uh, symmetric, blah, blah, and so on. Um, you can have also a taper angle over here. Okay, for your extrusion, feel free to explore this, this, this um, um, parameters and this setting. So we have created our first object, yeah? So it's worth to mention that you can go back, of course, to the sketch. You can modify your sketch. For example, this becomes now five, then you finish your sketch. And this has been automatically applied um, to the, to the uh, rectangle here, this, this body that we've been uh, creating before. So any change that you do in the sketch, you can, uh, you can modify it. Of course, guys, you can create in the sketch as complex uh, shapes as you want here. So we can have, uh, for example, a spline and anything of this can be extruded accordingly. So you can say finish sketch, the sketch is not visible, I will enable it, I will go here, I will push E and then I can extrude this one here. Okay, goes without saying that if you modify the sketch, you also modify the shape as well uh, and so on. Also, it's worth to be mentioned that the sketches are collected, of course, in the sketch uh, group, and the bodies are here uh, in the body group. So with body, we mean all the bodies that are solid uh, inside, okay? They are not like faces or 2D sketches and so on, they are solid, uh, solid pieces, okay? So um, the extrusion is one of the simplest way that you can use to create, uh, create three-dimensional uh, shapes. Uh, take care that the extrusion works by using the boolean uh, operations all the time. So the boolean operations between the, the, the solids are defined by some uh, operations that are, can be made uh, um, by using the overlapping of the two uh, solid parts. For example, if you have one part overlapping the other one, this can be subtracted or joined, for example, or it can be an intersection and so on. Let's have a look to some basic examples about what you can do with the uh, extrusion directly. So sketches, as I told you, can be created in any plane of of the uh, um, of the design. So this means you can have the planes on the region, but if you click on create sketch, you can also select a face from an object. So you can select, for example, uh, this face over here, and then this is our space where we can create our sketch. To be noted that once you do so. Fusion automatically highlights the um, perimeter of the uh, of the of the of the face, 
that you want to use. So this one becomes a reference, reference line uh, itself. So you can create, for example, an offset from it, or you can start exactly from this line. By the way, so if you uh, create another spline or any other design uh, with the sketches which, which is closed on top of this um, surface that you have just created here, then of course this one can be used as an extrusion. So I will do like this to have some complexity. So then here, for example, I can say, okay, please extrude this one. And so now once I extrude, I extrude towards upwards, and then here it starts showing me some automatic operation. For example, I uh, do I want to join this? Join this means that this becomes a unit body together with the body below. Do I want to cut this? But there is nothing to cut. Here it says no target body found to, to cut or intersect, because there is nothing here to cut. Uh, or I can just create a new body, which means this will be two different bodies. So if I do like this, it's uh, it's easy to understand, but if I if I go down and then I select cut, for example, I can make a hole, for example, into my shape. Okay, so I can, for example, just push OK, and then here I have created my hole here. Of course, you can also select the um, the opposite. So you can ju just go here, right click, uh, so um, you you go towards down. Inside, for example, intersection, and then you only have the intersection between the between the object. So you have noticed that sometimes when I move the the view, is like moving this in the center. Some other time, like if I move here, then it's still moving to the center of before. So you should see now there is a green dot close to the rectangle that we have created, which is here. You see that green dot? Okay, so that green dot is the power point of what you are what you are um, you are uh, you are pivoting onto. So the, the rotation of the view will be on top of this one. So if you, for example, will move this object in 3D, which is similar to what we did in 3D, and then I create a copy on this object, and you move this object really far away from here. So you see that this green point is in the center. So Fusion tries automatically to have a good power point for the 3D view. But of course, if you zoom here in, you don't want that power point to be that one. So sometimes Fusion can give you nuts about this. So one thing that you can do is to click on this uh, um, look at over here, and then you say, okay, I wanna look on this top surface over here, and this position Fusion exactly there, and you see the power point now, it's on top of that surface over there. So in case you get lost, you can work with this. Okay, guys, and this was the extrusion and the creation of sketches. On, like, right now, like now, I have the same issue, so I will go here and I will pivot like here. Yeah. So you can create sketches uh, on top of other surfaces. You can then work with extrusion um, in order to to apply modifications to the to the surfaces. Okay, I will briefly go back. <coughs> Another way of creating three-dimensional objects is to use the revolve command. <coughs> to use the revolve command we need a profile and we need a center line. So the, remo the revolve command, uh, if you have been working with a lathe maybe, it's rather useful to, <coughs> to create a round object or circular object. Think about like a glass or a bottle or a cylinder or something like that. So let's create one very quickly. So I will uh, create here a spline. Like this, I will confirm this plane over here. I will create a line, for example, that goes here, like this. And then I will say, okay, from these two that I select with double click, I wanna have an offset. Okay, this offset should be, yeah, I think this object will become very small. Okay, one millimeter over here. Then I will add these lines in order to close the, 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 the surface. So I have this surface that I can now revolve. Uh, and now I should create a reference line in the center, which will be just the power point on which we want to revolve. So I create this such a simple design. So then I can finish the sketch over here. And I can show it, of course. I can disable this rectangle over here. And then I can go on create, and then I can have revolve. 
So guys, uh, also you can not notice that Fusion tells you some advice once you hover some, some commands, like what Revolve is doing in this case. So I click on Revolve over here. Okay, this profile has been already selected, there is only one. I select, this is the rotational axis that I want. And then guys, I have here my, my Revolve. Okay, so then you can of course have the Revolve, revolve of uh, a specific angle. Uh, over here you can have one side, two sides, you can have new body, blah blah, so, um, or if this intersects another shape, so for example, if we have, this does not intersect, but we can do it, it's similar to the extrusion, guys, it's um, basically um, uh, allowing you to make Boolean operations, so you can create a new body, you can cut something, intersect something, and so on, so if we would have here, a rectangle uh, so if we go back and edit this sketch and we create a simple rectangle here and we extrude it um, let's have it a little bit longer like this and we extrude it maybe one millimeter then we go here on create and we do revolve again we select this one then the axis of rotation is this one and then you can see now that we can, of course, like cut this other shape or create a new one. So let's do a couple of examples. Okay, create a new body over here. I disable the sketch so I can see it. So here you can see this one. Um, I can do it again and I can, for example, cut this, this body. Maybe can select and so on. Yeah, so, and this cuts this body uh, accordingly. All right, so we have seen um, extrusions, we have seen revolving, yeah? Um, so let's have, let's have a look to what else we can create. So we can have more complex way of creating two-dimensional objects, such as with, with Zweep and, and, uh, and, and Loft. So let's have a look to, to those very quickly. So uh, I will create a new sketch here. Uh, this is the origin of my design. I will create a circle here, and this circle, for example, I will make it uh, 10 millimeters over here. Then I will finish the sketch over here. So then I know that this point that I used is the origin of my design. So I can rotate the view like this. Then I can create a new sketch on the front plane. And then I can click on the center, which corresponds to the center. Uh, of the circle of before and the region, and I will create a spline. So for example, I will create this spline. So I have to make it a little bit longer because I'm with not some sharp angles, because otherwise Fusion will not allow me to create the spline. So I've created this simple design over here, where you have this line that starts from the center. So in this case, I just use the origin of my design, but we will see that it's easy to take other kind of references uh, to make uh, this combination of sketches. So, for example, now I go to create, I click on, on sweep, and sweep, guys, needs a profile that you want to sweep, so for example, this profile over here, and it needs a path, so, and this is our path. And this creates this uh, cylinder, in this case, this um, prolongs the profile along this this line. And you can see here what you can do um, with, a, with a sweep, okay? So here you have footer options, angles, twist angle, perpendicularity. You can have single path, path plus, plus guide rail, and so on. I, I recommend you to explore this uh, a lot. Uh, of course, um, I think here uh, what I want to show you also that um, you can have here different kinds of, of profile. So the profile doesn't have to be uh, uh, a circle. So you can have a spline, for example, as, as profile. And then, although this spline is a rather big, we will see if it's possible to do it. Um, sweep. And then you can try to have this as, 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 as sweep. Yeah. One thing is that fusion, when something is not possible because of uh, um, uh, it's not mathematically consistent or there are overlapping, uh, for example, sections, in this case, arrows will be thrown at you. And these arrows are going to tell you, okay, this is not possible because the body would intersect itself, okay? So once you know this, you can act accordingly to, to, 
um, to fix the issue. So for example, I will go here. This was my mistake. I made this fine as I told you. Very big, so that the shape will luckily intersect itself. So I will make this one, which is a little bit smaller than before. I will finish my sketch over here. I will go here and then I go to create and then I click on sweep and then I click on the profile and then on the path and fusion this time doesn't show me an error <laughs> you can have here your your um, um, sweep so guys all the boolean operation that I was telling you are kept so if this intersects another body you can of course join cut or intersect so it's it's exactly the same as the extrusion or the of the or the uh, revolving okay this was the sweep another nice uh, thing is uh, loft um, so loft is basically um, a transitional shape that you have between two, two, two surfaces or, or planar faces so this can be done from from um, from bodies or from from sketches we will do it from sketches because it's useful to show you uh, some planes so for example I will create a new sketch and um, for example, um, here I will use uh, a spline, so I will do this like this, yeah, and then I finish sketch, and I have this one over here. Now what I want to show you is that you have not only construction lines, but also construction planes. Construction planes are reference planes um, that you can use for uh, many things. The, the main... Um, um, need that we have is to have a flat plane in this case to have a sketch so on top of these planes you can create additional sketches you can add a new plane if you go to construct and you see here you have tons of options to create uh, a new plane we will see only some of those i will show you for example the offset plane which is the easiest one offset plane creates a, a plane from uh, that has an offset from an existing plane so this means you can have a plane from a surface of a body or from a sketch and so on. So for example, I create an offset plane, I create on this closed surface, then I say, okay, I wanna have this one with an offset of 100 millimeters on top, yeah? So I push, okay. And now you see this plane is usable and it's inside construction here. So now you can draw a sketch on this plane. So I will create a sketch here. And then here, for example, I will create a simple square and then I say finish sketch and now I have these two sketches over here. So one surface here, one surface here. So this is the ideal situation that we want to create a loft. So we click on loft here and then loft says, okay, please select the profiles. So I will select this profile over here and then select the second profile over here. And this creates a loft trying to merge exactly these, these, two, these two shapes gradually from the start to the end over here so you have here different options that you're free to, to explore and this will be our our loft for example all right so we have seen a bit also about construction planes uh, over here <clears throat> okay let's have a look in in create so i will uh, just hide this sketch for convenience so feel free to explore also this this other one read web and emboss i will show you just some simple other ones um, so one important thing is that you can also create objects from directly 3D primitives. In this case here you have box, cylinder, sphere, torus, coil, and, and pipe. Um, but I would highly recommend you guys, uh, because of the power of the constraints and the parameters that you can, you can add, that you start from the sketches. Uh, because you can make really much more complex designs by using the sketches rather than uh, Boolean combining boxes or cylinders and so on. So you can, for example, click on box, of course, and then we will create our symbol box. So here you have your 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 distances and so on. This is our box, okay? Um, yeah. So for example, you, we can easily make a hole in this box. So one way would be to make a sketch and then extrude and uh, cut from it. But you can also, of course, just create this hole here. You can move the hole. You can change the dimension here of the hole. Uh, and so on. So you can change the dimension of the uh, bottom side, top side of the hole. You can uh, custom made, uh, customize your, your hole as you wish. Um, yeah, um, so pipe works in a similar way than, than, than sweep. 
Uh, but there is a difference that I want to show you. Um, so if I click here, for example, on, on uh, creating a sketch, I will make a spline over here. I will create this like this, and then I confirm the spline. This is a nice spline, finish. Uh, the difference is that pipe, guys, it takes into consideration uh, only specific kinds of profiles, and it doesn't need a predefined profile to work. So if you click on pipe, then you can just select the, the path, and then, as you can see, it doesn't want to have another profile. So you can work only with predefined profiles. So you have here, for example, circular profile, square profile, triangular profile, and so forth. Also, because it's a tube, of course, you can say, I want to have it hollow. So you're going to have your, your hollow tube over here. Of course, you can define the thickness. It's one millimeter, two millimeters over here. Section sides here, it can be as you want, for example, 30 millimeters, and so on. So, and then you have created your, your pipe. Okay, so only a spline, it doesn't require a profile to work with. All right, we go back some steps. Um, so, of course, you can have patterns, so circular patterns or rectangular patterns of what we have just created. Um, so, maybe we can still keep this, this pipe, just to, to, to show you a couple of things. So for example, let's make a mirror. So a mirror in 3D, guys, works in a similar way of 3D. Uh, first, um, you have to select the object that you want to mirror. For example, you want to mirror this one. Now you have to select the mirror plane that you want to use, and you can use any existing plane. So you can use a plane from the origin, like top, front, back, and so on. You can use a plane of a body, so for example, this one over here, yeah. Or of course, you can I don't know, create a new plane like an offset plane, and then you say, okay, I wanna I wanna have the mirror on this on this plane over here, and then this will be my plane here. And then you see there is some overlapping, of course, here of your um, of your design, okay. So we can, you can delete planes if you click on them. You can delete bodies if you uh, select them, like this partial selection. Then you can delete them like this. Okay. So we can, of course, have um, um, patterns. Yeah. So you can have rectangular patterns or circular patterns. Um, in this case, you have to set also the directions again. And then you can say, okay, I want to have this by distance or extension. So you can have patterns of your objects created very easily. The distance, okay, this would be, for example, the spacing. This would be 300 millimeters, push, okay. Um, oh, that's weird. Let me see what I have done wrong. <laughs> yeah, so although Fusion is, um, is, let's say, some sort of commercial co software, I mean, we can have it free. Uh, it still might have some some small uh, issues so far. Maybe there were some overlapping um, things like this. I mean, push OK. Yeah, yeah. There must be some some weird things about this. Yeah. So let's uh, do it with some simple shapes. Um, one thing that you might realize also is, guys, that everything that we have done, it's um, saved in the history bar. So here you can see we can just like go back to what we were doing. I mean, I was deleting more, most of the stuff, so they are not here. Um, but for example, you can see, okay, this step is, we have just this spline. This step, we did the profile for the sweep and so on. So you can go back from, from here. I will do this here because this is free from, from any of the constraints that we used before to create the, the pipe and so on. So we just go to pattern again, and we say rectangular pattern, and then the directions. Uh, we can also use the edges of a body as directions, for, for example, these ones over here. Yeah. Uh, ah, yeah, sorry, that's the, that's the issue. I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't saw it. Yeah. So many, many operations, like moving um, in, in 3D, can be done to different objects. Uh, in this case, I was doing something weird because I was uh, using the faces as, as selection. So when you have three-dimensional objects, you can, uh, let's have a look. 
quickly. Um, so this is our three-dimensional object. You can have the object itself. You can select all of it, and you can see. You can also select it from here, body four. You can select a single face, which is this face over here, or you can select the vertex, like this, of your object, or the point, like this. Okay, so the edge, sorry, or the vertex here. Okay. So um, what I was doing is I was creating a pattern from 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 the face. In this case, the pattern it should be created from the uh, from the bodies here. So that's why it didn't work before. So if you now select the direction, you can also select this one here, and then you can of course do like this and do like this, for example. And then you push OK, and you have your your pattern. Yeah. All right, so uh, we did show the mirror and the pattern. You can also have the circular pattern, guys. I'm not going to do it because it's it's uh, very um, uh, very easy uh, to do. It's similar to the rectangular, just in a circle. But what I want to show you is uh, this um, um, pattern uh, that can be applied to faces because uh, before it didn't work, uh, but I can show you how this would work in the case of faces. So for example, let's say that we create our rectangle here and we extrude it like, I don't know, five millimeters, maybe 10. Yeah, so this is rather big rectangle over here. So then we can create a sketch over here and then we can, I don't know, have a spline here. And then we say, okay, this one, let's make it a little bit more tricky. This one here is a spline, I will extrude it. I will make a hole. So for example, I will extrude just to make this hole over here. And now in this case, this face here, it's something that you can use for the face pattern. Okay, so <clears throat> you can go to create and you can go to pattern. You can say, okay, I wanna have a rectangular pattern. Um, you have to select the face that you want to use. It's already selected. So you can remove the selection by clicking on this X and then click on select. Okay, I want to use this one over here. You know, then I want to select the um, directions, which are this one over here. And then guys here, I can have my 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 pattern with the, with the, with the face. So I can basically replicate the holes. This is a, a scenario where you want to use the, the um, pattern with the faces, okay? All right, we have been seeing quite a lot about creation here. So feel free to explore the rest. As uh, Neil was mentioned, it's also integrated with other stuff, like also you can make PCBs, uh, 3D PCBs, uh, circuit boards, and so on. So another uh, important uh, feature of the creation is the form. So guys, with the form, um, Fusion, it's likely opening another workbench where you can uh, play freely with the forms. So it's like a sort of sculpting workbench where you can have a freeform editing. So let's have a quick tour on that. So you can click on this, create form. So once you click on create form, you will see that the whole menu here will, will change. You still have, of course, the, the possibility to create uh, sketches. In a similar way of the sketches, uh, once you create a form, you need to, to finish the form. So like a sketch, you need to finish the sketch. Uh, this means basically that the all editing that you can do to the form will stay in this workbench. And once you fix the form or you finish the form, this will be not uh, 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 possible to be modified as you are doing here freely, but will become like a body. So you can just work with extrusions, uh, Boolean operations, and other stuff that we have seen before. So for example, let's create a simple box from the region. So let's make it maybe this is really big. Um, yeah, let's make it like this, for example. Yeah. So this is similar to the creation of the box, but it creates this kind of organic filleted box over here. And then here you can push. OK, right? So now you will see that this shape is divide, divided in different phases. And you can freely select these phases uh, over here. Some basic transformations that you can do to the, to the phases are uh, here in the modify menu. So the basic one that you should know is the edit form. Um, so if you click on edit form, then this will pop up like a sort of moving um, arrows. So and if you drag, drag these arrows, 
you can see how you can freely modify this, this shape. Of, similarly to the movements, you can also have the rotation, so you can like rotate the shape as you want. Uh, you can also drag this to have free movements on the shape and so on. And here you can select, okay, I want to have multi, only translation, only rotation, or even scale. So guys, you can select this and you can scale it up or down. So it's, it's rather full, uh, powerful. Um, this uh, is just a set of things that you can, you can do because these ones are now applied um, uh, to the face. But if you want, you can also have a selection filter. So you can select like a single dot and then you work only with this dot here. Yeah, so only one vertex. You can select one edge. Okay, we'll work with this, with this edge over here. So scaling this edge. So the combination of the things that you can do, it's really a lot. Then face, then all faces, all the body, um, and so on. Okay, so feel free to, to explore um, these combinations. So um, now another thing that is useful to know is, for example, the symmetry. So you can have some sort of symmetry to replicate the changes. It's like mirroring the changes, for example. No, I want to have, for example, a symmetry. So I select uh, this phase uh, over here. And now these two, for example, are having a symmetry. So this means that this is sort of mirroring line between these two phases here. And this means that all the sides on the left and all the sides on the right will have the same changes. So if I push here to see this is green now, then I click on this one. And I say, okay, I want to edit this form, and then I edit this. Guys, these changes will be done in a symmetry from each from each other. Okay. So these are universe of things that you can do inside this. I just wanted to show you the basic one. You can also have a subdivision. Subdivision is a useful tool because uh, it will select one phase and then it will um, divide it in multiple phases, watch out that fusion to be able to do this mathematically, it could briefly alter your, your shape as it did here. So here you can divide as you want and you push OK and then each of these becomes, for example, a modification phase that you can have for, for um, modifying your, your body. Okay, And this has been applied here as well because it was having with the, the symmetry um, on it. Okay. So guys, here you have really a lot of things. You can smooth, for example, your object. Um, there was, um, you can merge the, some edges that are open, for example. Uh, you can create bridges, you can fill a hole. It's, it's really lots of things, and I'm, I'm not going to, to show you all of them. Uh, but please try to, to explore them um, as much as you want. So once your, your form is finished here, you can click on Finish Form. And guys, this is not anymore something that you can edit as we did before. Okay, so it becomes like a body here and then you can work um, for it. All right, and this was the, the form uh, workbench. So yeah, I will just um, hide this body now to just go on. All right, um, let's have a look to some modifications that you, you can do to your bodies. So this modification that we've seen in create form are only in create form, but you can have also other modifications that you can apply to your, to your, to your body. So we can create a box again. Uh, maybe we can look on the top. Yeah, and we can make this box like this, and we can see some very simple modifications that we can apply to it. <clears throat> so the first modification that I i like to show you is the press pull modification. The press pull, uh, it's applied to, 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 to faces and it's actually allowing you um, to offset these this faces, to move these faces around and to change the volume of your, of your body. So the simplest way is you click on press pull, then you click on this and then you can just edit this one. This can be done of course so with a sketch, with the parameters, with many other ways, but this is just a, a way of doing it with the press pull. Uh, you can, of course, select uh, multiple. So in case you have, for example, um, two bodies over here, you can select multiple of these. So for example, um, press pull, and you can, for example, press pull these. Uh, yeah, maybe. No, yeah, sorry. No, for this one, you can only do it once. Okay. 
So, and it's uh, only with, uh, you can also do it with Q. So if you press Q, you are going to have this one, by the way. Um, this because I copied these two, and then these two have this dependency, and then um, this one will also move accordingly to it. Uh, I will just go back before I copy. All right, so <clears throat> um, then we have fillet. Fillet, guys, it creates a fillet in an edge. So for example, it creates this fillet over here. Um, then, guys, you can still edit this, this, this fillet. You can still do it with a press pull face. So you go here, you press Q, and then, guys, you can still edit the fillet. So you can also type another parameter over here. To, you can delete the fillet if you click here and you press cancel. The fillet will be gone. You can create uh, fillets, of course, for any of the edges that you want. And this creates a fillet uh, like this. And now, after I create this fillet, it's worth to mention that the uh, press pool it works also um, by taking care of the um, features of your body. So if you run up press pool this one, I'm oh, sorry, Q, it will keep the fillet uh, over here. So if you use this surface for an extrusion, then this will be different. So the extrusion with E or create extrude, then this will extrude the surface and will go up like this. All right, and this was the, the fillet. Of course, you can have chamfer. So you just click on the corners and you have chamfer. You can modify the chamfer as we did before. Here, now this chamfer is five, and all the chamfer here will be five, and so on. Uh, you can also have uh, draft uh, surfaces. So we can, for example, increase this one over here, and then you click on, on draft, okay? And then you say, okay, I uh, which one is the pull direction? Like this one is the pull direction. Which one will be the face that I wanna have to draft? And then with these guys, you can change the draft angle of the of the surface over here. Yeah. All right, and this was the draft. Okay, we have scaling. Scaling, it's rather easy. You click on the object, you click on one point that you want to have as a reference, for example, this one, and then you say, I want to scale it. It's uniform scaling with a factor, uh, or it is non-uniform, so I want to scale just epsilon by two. And I have, for example, this one, over here, um, and so on. So feel free to explore the scaling. Uh, we have, of course, uh, Combine, which works in a really similar way of what we have seen with uh, the extrusion and the revolve. So we can, for example, <coughs> create uh, a sphere here, and okay, this maybe will be 50 millimeter diameter over here. Uh, we can move this body um, over the sphere, over here, and then we can perform our boolean operation. So, for example, move, uh, <coughs> here we have combine, so that is the name for boolean operation in fusion. Uh, you can join, so this and this will become one unique body. So now it's body 7, if I delete it, um, let's see if I had it. In this case, this will become like this. Uh, if I go back, until there were two bodies, now there are two bodies. I can uh, do again combine and then uh, target body is this one, tool body is this one, I wanna cut it. So I'm going to, to, to cut it, you push OK, and this has created this, this shape over here. So take care that Q, press pull, it's really powerful and it works for all the surfaces that you wanna modify. It tries to keep the same features. So you can also click on this and then you can play with it. So you can also increase or decrease the size of, of this, okay? <coughs> so another feature, there are many other features uh, here, um, is to uh, split the body. Uh, you can have, for example, for example, a construction plane. So construct offset plane here. Then I click on the plane I, was, I want to use as a reference, and then I can click, I can move this by the middle, for example, then you push OK, and then we can do a, um, a split body. So split body, what is a split will be this one, splitting tool will be this middle plane that I've used, you push OK, and then here you can have your split body into different, into different parts, okay? 
All right, then another important thing I want to show you guys is about the, the alignments and the movement uh, snapping that you can that you can use. So um, let's say that I now I will create, for example, a cylinder here and I will make it 120. OK, um, then I sorry, I will create um, a box again and this plane I will be like this and then it can be like this so some simple things about the movements are uh, the, the the snapping points and the way that we can move so if you press M movement okay you can also find this in modify um, okay move type we have to select our body we want to move these of course we have these ones we can rotate you can have here, please, only translation, only rotation. Um, but you can have here also point to point, in a similar way as we had in, uh, in, in the sketches. So you can select any of the points of this, and then we can move this accordingly. So one easy way is to select one, one vertex here. So for example, I will select this vertex here, and I will say I want to move this here. And this moves the body exactly to it okay so again you have also the option to create a copy and so on so another thing that is really powerful um, or the snapping point that is really powerful are the center points so i can say for example if you click on this uh, circle you will see that this creates a, um, a cross little blue cross in the center and this means i snap it to the center of this circle so i click on the on the circumference and then target point, and I click on this one, for example. And this one, now it's exactly on top of that one over there. So you can use different uh, snapping points uh, for the movements. Uh, the alignment in Fusion can also work with the movements. So let's say, for example, that I want to align this. I have this phase and this phase, and I want to align them, right? Uh, keeping the object. So I can, for example, move here. And then I can move this arrow, and then I can click on this face here, boom, and this is automatically now aligned. Okay, it's worth to mention that every time you move, guys, you can set a power point. So if you select bodies here, and then you try to move, you see, Fusion is telling you, okay, let's move from the center of the of the edge, let's move from the center of this face, for example, let's move from the center of this cylinder. For example, let's move from this point over here and keeping this angle over here. So if you are not happy, let's say that you click on here, you have this power point is here. No? If you are not happy about this power point, you can click on set pivot. And then you can remove it from there and you can move it to another point. Remember also the pivot doesn't have to be on this body. The pivot can also be on this body, for example, over here. So once you click it here and then you push confirm, this is now your pivot point. So you can easily, for example, rotate this object on that pivot point. Yeah. So these are some basic alignments. Of course, you also have alignments here in Modify Align, yeah, where you can use directly this tool uh, to align the thing. So you can, for example, click on these and say, OK, I want to align this and this. And this is aligned directly in the center uh, of it. So you have different options. Over here, like flip, angle, blah, blah, and so on. So feel free to, to explore those. Another alignment that you can do is, of course, with the press pull. So you can, for example, click on this, and then you can move this, and then you say, I want to have this pulled up to here. And this pulls this exactly up to here. Right? So. All right, I think we have finished this, this, this section. I'm going to go a little bit further with simple assembly, rendering, simulation, and um, some other small things. Guys, do you have questions about it for now? Are you still there? Give me a sign of your life. <laughs> OK, thank you, guys. It's too complicated. I'm going too fast. I don't know. OK, guys, then let's go further. Um, just a simple thing that you can also find modify is the appearance. Um, 
I mean, this will be rather useful for for the for the for the rendering. Let's quick uh, quickly have a look to it. If you click on modify appearance, uh, here you have list of uh, materials uh, relative to the appearance. Um, you can have, of course, metal like aluminium, brass. Um, for each thing, you have, for example, I don't know, analyzed aluminium, um, uh, satin, uh, satinated aluminium, um, and so on. Um, for example, to have a quick look, you can have, for example, wood like bamboo. And then to apply this to, 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 to a body, you can just take it and drag it, and this becomes like bamboo. And this becomes like sherry over here, right? So, and then you have modified the appearance of your, of your object. One thing that you can do is also modify the single face appearance. So, for example, I want to modify only this part, the surface here inside. So you can click on the surface, then go to Appearance. You see this is the only one highlighted now. And then I want to have um, some other stuff like this one inside. Yeah, well, I just choose one that the difference is not much. Um, so I will redo it. Modify Appearance. And uh, yeah, let's say that we have a different kind. Yeah, no, I'm keeping choosing something that is not uh, different. Okay, I, I know there is no, yeah, maybe there is a coating on the, on the yeah, no, bronze is the same color. Uh, let's use like this blue, that should be evident. Okay, so now we have this, this other uh, appearance uh, over here. Okay, the appearance, guys, modifies just the, the outer appearance of the, of the material, but doesn't modify the physical material. So... The physical material is the specific material that is used to uh, to create your object then in reality because on top of this uh, we can run for example uh, simulations and um, other other important things so with physical materials you go here and you have some uh, existing materials so uh, I forgot to mention for the for the appearance and for the physical materials you can add your own materials um, so here you have this library and then you can additive nonlinear libraries and so on favorites, and there are ways to add also your your materials here. So you just, for example, click on metal. Okay, this is aluminium here. This will not only change the kind of material, but it will also change the uh, appearance of the material. Only one. Okay. Uh, once you, you you put it, then you apply the other appearance, and it stays uh, in place uh, here. So it shows you just the preview once you put it, how the room will look like, but then the other appearance will override it. Yeah, here you can manage the different materials that you have. As I told you, you can add more materials and so on. You can manage the appearances. Uh, over here, this is another universe you can try to, uh, to explore yourself. So um, maybe let's go back before I was applying everything. So um, here you can see that if you select one of these uh, bodies and you right click, you also have these options here, like physical material, okay, uh, what is this here, and I can change it, and so on. Um, you can, um, um, okay, show hide, yeah, of course, copy, delete. You can save this as STL for 3D printing. Uh, if you wish to, you can work with the text map control. Um, yeah, you can make it selectable. Uh, unselectable uh, and so on. So feel free to explore this this context menu over here. Okay, but let's have a look to to what we can do with the with the assemble menu. So it's not said that if we move, you know, a screw into the hole here, this screw is assembled to that to that hole. It's it, it's uh, that is tight, no. So just moving something close to another uh, object is is not assembling it mechanically. So this means they are somehow not connected with some basic rules, for example, pivoting, rotating, sliding, uh, and so on, right? So let's try to, to create some, some simple joints. There are many different kinds of, of, of joints. Um, also worth to mention, there are contact sets. You can, uh, for example, having um, Fusion trying to simulate uh, surfaces in contact that they are pushing each other. Think about two gears. For example, this is still not really working 100%. For some things, Fusion is uh, still uh, not perfect, but it's it's a start for these kind of joints. 
All right, let's design something that can be used for our, for our joints. Uh, very easy. So I will, for example, create a um, linear shaft, for example, 20 millimeters, and I will extrude this shaft, for example, 100 millimeters over here. Okay. And then I will create something a linear bearing that will slide on, onto this one. So I will create a circle here. This is 20, this will be, for example, 40. Yeah, I will select this one. <coughs> uh, wait, I will also uh, uh, create um, a point here. So let's create like a tooth, so just that we can see that this is rotating, otherwise it's going to be uh, difficult. So I'm going to create this line. I make a mirror of this line here, and I will just extrude like this one. I will extrude it for example 5 millimeter. I will say this is a new body, right? And then I will move this this body for example here. Also, how we can uh, create um, a joint between between two bodies. So we have different ways here. Um, um, you can create a, a joint. So position components relative to one to another and device the, the, and you can define the relative motions. As a built-in joint, this means that uh, the bodies will, uh, the components will maintain this, the current position and so forth, that the joint origin, that the origin is joint and so on. There are different kinds. Um, one thing that you might notice is what, whenever we talk about joints, Fusion talks about components. So components are a special kind of, um, of, um, of uh, objects in, in, in Fusion 360 which uh, can hold more complexities than the simple bodies. So uh, components uh, will have their own origin point. Components can be assembled. Component can be used in, in the animation workbench uh, and so forth. Uh, you can also have multiple bodies inside the components, different sketches inside the components. So you can think of like as a complex object in, in, in Fusion. So in order to apply this joint, we need to have components. And right now we don't have components, right? So I will go on this and I will call this shaft. And I will call this bearing, for example, here. And then I will make these two components. So I can select both with, with shift. And then right click, I can click on create components on bodies. Yeah? So I click on this and you will see that the components are now here on the bottom. Yeah, so here you can see you have your own origin that you can change. You have your own, uh, for example, bodies inside. You can have two bodies inside and so on. So now we keep it simple. So we go to assemble and we click on as built-in join for this uh, specific example. So we have to select the components that we wanna uh, have in the joint, and we wanna select also the kind of uh, a joint type. So um, Fusion will show you a preview about these this joint types, and you can clearly see what, uh, what's the meaning of, of them. So OK, so I will first select this, this body here. Then I will select this one over here, and then I will say rigid. Play. OK, this means, you see Fusion is, is, is showing you this. This means these two are like uh, solidly attached. So this means they, they will not move. You know? So then you have a revolution here and then you have to select where you want to have this, this revolution. For example, I want to have this revolution here, so you can see how this revolution will work. You can play also here for this uh, revolution. So this is similar to the movement pivot, pivot point. You can put it, if you have a reference point, where you want, and this will rotate or apply the joint uh, type to this, to this pivot point. So you can have, of course, slider, so we can simulate our, our linear bearing, let's say, movement over here. You can have, like, in, some, in case you have like a thread here, you can simulate that this, this goes up and down like this. Um, yeah, um, you can have, of course, more complex. So this is, of course, something that we don't want in this case, but you can think about like something that runs. Maybe you have like a linear rail uh, where the carriage will slide back and forth. Uh, so this can be applied. Uh, you have ball rotation, you have many different other kinds of, 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 of joints, okay? So with this, I will show you briefly the, the joint uh, type. So once you click on here, this stays, this joint stays, and then you can operate the joints accordingly, for example. 
All right. And this was a simple tour in, in making assembly. We can dig on each of these things, guys, really a lot. Um, but just for now, it's something to give you the basics. Okay, guys, other things that we can explore are the insert menu. Okay, inspect, just to, to mention it, it's, it's similar to the other one. You have this, this line here, 138 millimeter, and you can check, you can click on surface. Tells you the area and the loop length. Uh, you also have other analysis. You can do uh, curvature map analysis, draft analysis, and so on. Please feel free to explore this, the center of mass uh, yourself. With the insert, guys, you can insert things from, from outside. Um, you can, uh, of course, uh, insert like common um, formats, 2D common formats like SVG or DXFs. These ones, they will be uh, treated as sketches. Uh, so you will um, have sketches with the lines and then you can extrude them, apply constraints and parameters to it, uh, and so on. You can insert a mesh, which means you insert a STL or you can insert an OBJ file. Uh, so uh, uh, meshes are like objects that are defined by uh, simple coordinates. So you, if you open an STL file that is encoded in, in ASCII, you will find the coordinates of all the vertex and edges uh, and so on. Uh, you can insert canvas pictures if you want, the decals uh, that you can put on the surface and so on, so feel free to explore the, the insert uh, here. Of course, guys, you can also go to, uh, to, to here, so for example, let's, let's save this, this design, so I will save it, I will call it uh, test, here, save, yeah, uh, here you have this, this, this save over here, of course, you can upload other design and you can insert these designs uh, here. Uh, just to show you, there are different um, uh, kind of, of um, websites that you can use as sync. Um, Neil was showing you GrabCAD. I highly recommend GrabCAD for, GrabCAD for things relative to the, to the makers. So you can find here all the boards, like you can find here the Raspberry Pi. Um, for example, yeah, and you can find here lots of things about Raspberry, the buttons, the Raspberry Pi itself, and lots of stuff. You can find Arduinos. Um, maybe here you can find the GT2 pulleys um, and so on, um, the belts. Uh, you can find many, many things. Um, you can find things, that, for example, about open source printers like Prusa, RepRaps here lots of objects uh, and so on. So this is one website and here you can just uh, download um, um, your specific design and then you can import it in Fusion. Uh, you have to register by the way but I have to tell you the registration doesn't bother you with crappy emails uh, afterwards. It's it's really really fine so then you can go here in the pulley and then you can see which files do you have for example, this one has a step file .stp that is really useful to us um, for it. Um, yeah, of course, we are not in the United States, but uh, in the insert, you have the Mac master car component also. Yeah, honestly, I don't like this because many things are still in the imperial uh, sizes, so I'm not going into that. But if you want, you can also go into Mac master car and you can search um, directly from, from, from here your products, your screws, uh, and so on. There are, there are, they also have some metric stuff um, here. Um, yeah, so we have just downloaded, for example, this, this pulley is inside a zip file. You can extract the pulley here. Um, this is the content of, of uh, the, the zip. So we can, uh, for example, go here, upload, uh, select files. Uh, we go inside the in a second, we can also drag the files because I think it's faster. So we can just take the step file and we can put the file here. This will be uploaded. And this will become then one, one file that you have here. So usually when you have complex designs, my recommendation is to split uh, this in different parts of design. So you design, for example, your, your overall design is a car. You have a one file for the wheels, one file for the engine, one file for the, for the uh, I don't know, the body and so on. And then you can put all these designs uh, together. So for example, I have this, this, this pulley here. 
that was a step file and now it's being converted into into a fusion format so here you can see you have different bodies and you can work with these bodies as it is in fusion so you can i don't know modify these and so on but then of course you can insert this in, inside another design so you can say here right click insert into current design here then you can uh, position this one wherever you want i will put it here just for for the sake of this simple example and here push ok and this now tells you oh look this one is linked from this other file over here so if i go here and i do a modification for example i will change this from 2.5 to 2 so my shaft is 4 millimeter and i save this file over here then you see this appears this one is out of date so you can right click you can say edit in place so you modify it directly here or you can say get the latest version which means now this is radius two millimeters so it's uh, updated from the other one so if we, like this way you can compose your design and, and so forth okay it's worth to mention also guys that um yeah whether you um yeah sorry i want to close this one whether you apply a modification to Uh, if you want, yes, please, uh, Ferdi. Thank you for your time. I'm sorry, I'm taking long. Thank you, thank you, Ferdi. Uh, so, guys, I was telling you, if you do a modification to this file, then you 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 save it. Here, you can say a version description. So this is like the commit message of your of your um, uh, of your. Uh, um, a repository you know when you commit you have to say okay I updated week one I updated week two and so on in this case you can write here directly what you changed so for example from here till here I copied this 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 cube so I say okay I um, copied uh, body two for example push okay now guys this copied body two will be here in version two and you have here for example copied body two uh, commit yeah, so you can promote this one as I was showing you before, and so on. All right, guys. So with this, we we end up a little bit the design uh, workbench. Uh, do you have questions and comments? Yeah, but but it's not finished. <laughs> if you have more time, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, so guys, if you if you agree, I'm going to show you a little bit about simulation and rendering. Uh, Jefferson and Arley, how are you? It's everything that you already know. This one. Okay, let's go then into simulation as well. Okay, share your screen and screens, screen one, go live. Okay, um, also maybe guys, just to conclude this part that I, I forgot, there is another website um, that is called Trace Parts, which is for professional parts. And in this, uh, can you see my screen guys? Okay, in this uh, website, Trace Parts, you can also register for free. This website has all the professional parts like that they are coming from companies. So here you find more than 1000 catalogs. And you have catalogs guys from, from, the, from the big companies. So you have catalogs uh, for, for example, let's browse mechanical components over here. Maybe you find a catalog from, from Siemens, from, from Bosch. Um, look, um, here you have all the companies from all Europe. Italy, France, Spain, Germany, blah, blah, and so on. Um, you also have catalogs about the standard organization. You have here the DIN catalog, Deutsche Norm catalog. You can find all the screws about uh, this. You can find this for different formats and so on. It's really huge. I use this for professional things. When I want to use, for example, DIN 912 screw, we will see this more in mechanical design. You just click here 
in, in DIN, you know, and this is a DIN script from exactly the dimension from the DIN, you know. Then you go here, you say I want to load uh, Fusion 360 model here, and then for example, you can download this, you can select the sides here. For example, this is um, yeah, nominal 1.6 M, 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 let's do M, M3, maybe M3. It's M3, 8 millimeter length. Yeah, and then once you click this, this will update the, the result here. And then you can download this and import it as I, I showed you. So also this you can register for free and it's um, not bothering you with, with emails uh, and so on. Because if you want to do things professionally, like I searched lots of stuff for my machine building activities, I recommend you guys to, to come here and you can find all the all the things that you need. It's really, really huge. TracePaths.com. Okay, but let's go back to what we were saying before. And um, let's go back a little bit to other to other um, um, workbenches. So I will show you a little bit about simulation and and uh, animation. So let's do a simple simulation first. So simulation, guys, you need to um, think about uh, possible scenarios. Um, you can import an aluminium profile, for example, uh, from from trace parts. Um, here and then you can test on these real shapes. I mean, now we'll do a test here. You have the, the brackets, the wrinkles, for example. I will do a real uh, simple test with something that I desire, but you should also think about making something yourself, okay? So let's, uh, so importing real things yourself. So let's do something, something very simple. So let's design, for example, um, a circle, which is 100. Then we design a circle inside this, which is, for example, 20. Then we extrude this and we go to, for example, uh, 10 millimeter here. Then we create another body on top of it, and this is like another circle, which is, for example, um, 35 here. Then you, for example, extrude this, and this will be, let's make it also 10, and this will be a new body over here, right? So we created this, this, simple, um, this simple thing over here. So we can go, for example, to, to simulation now. The first thing that you realize is that in simulation, guys, you have different ways of uh, simulating the thing. So you have static stress, motor frequencies, uh, electronics, cooling, uh, thermal preview, even simulation, like for the shock absorber on your motorcycle, the nonlinear static stress, structural buckling, thermal stress, and shape optimization. These are the universe. I will uh, show you basically the static stress and I also like to show you quickly the shape optimization. Uh, for some of these guys you need to have credits um, because the solving of the simulation will happen often in the cloud. If uh, the simulation is mandated that has uh, to be done in the cloud, you need to buy the credits. In your uh, free account you have uh, 100 credits, but after those are finished you need to buy the, the credits. Uh, so if you have a powerful computer, you can do this better on, on your computer. But some op some um, um, simulations, they cannot be done, like the shape optimization, can only run on the cloud. But let's start with the static stress. I believe that all of you know what the static stress is. We basically have a piece and we apply some force to this piece. And then uh, we see uh, what are the bending or the deformations of, of the materials, right? So here we have our our uh, our designs, and actually I think it's good if we yeah we remove some stuff because this hand hides some of the stuff that we don't want. Um, yeah, I will delete this, and I will also delete the skills. So we have only these, and yeah, the sketches we can keep. So we go back to simulation here. All right. So. We have to go through a little bit of the settings now for the simulation. We have to give to Fusion a little bit more um, information about what we're going to do. So first of all, we have to work with the materials. So here, you, if you click on study materials, you can see the materials. So by default, everything that Fusion creates is steel. Okay? But when you run the simulation, you can change the materials. So if you go here, you can say, okay, this is lead, this is aluminum. This is acrylic, air, um, bronze, copper, and so on. We can do many, many things. Let's make this aluminum. And this is the, the first part, no? 
And then you can select also here, for example, the second part is also aluminum. And safety factor, guys, is actually the um, safety factor that you should observe in the real uh, application. So this means basically you shouldn't go over this safety factor. Usually the safety factor is an order of magnitude of the real uh, deformation. So usually we say you have a component that can bend three in, uh, having three times more the force that is in the real case scenario. And this is your, your safety factor. Here you can select if this is yield strength or ultima, ultimate tensile strength. That will keep yield strength. Here you have your material libraries. You can add your, li your materials and blah, blah, and so on. So we select like this. Now this has been changed. The appearance is aluminum, right? So then you have constraints. So because Neil has, uh, was showing a change yesterday, and it's like here it's empty on the bottom. There is like void. So if you don't have any constraints, this is going to fall down from here, right? So you, you can add structural constraints. Constraints are like, OK, uh, I want to set as fixed some parts of my, my designs or some faces. In this case, for example, I select this surface. And I say, you shouldn't move in x. You shouldn't move in y. You shouldn't move in, 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 in z. So it's fixed. It's blocked. So with this, we have fixed this. And we have this, this symbol. The lock for it here, right? Then we have to define the loads. So where we are going to have the loads, and loads are expressed in terms of force. So we can select, for example, this phase over here, and this is these arrows are, are the force that are being applied. If you want to have a, an, an, uh, a force applied into another point, you can apply this in the center. Uh, you can create a surface in the center, for example, and you can apply only this to the, to the center. And the force is in Newton. So we know that roughly 10 Newtons is one kilogram of force in this case. Um, so let's, this is aluminum. Let's put, for example, 500 kilos uh, on it. So 5,000 Newtons on it, right? So you can also change the direction of the force. You can have an angle in the force and so on. We keep it simple for now. OK, and we have this force applied over here. So all these things, guys, are also here. Study materials, aluminum, aluminum, load case one, loads. You have gravity is not considered in this case. We can consider it if we want. And we have the force over here and the constraints over here, right? Other thing that we need to know is which surfaces are in contact. And fusion can detect the contacts automatically. So anything that is less than 0 0.10 millimeter distance will be considered as a contact. You can do click on generate. This generates the, the contacts automatically. So once we are, uh, um, are done with the forces, the constraints, the contacts, and the materials, we can run our simulation here. So we go to, to, to solve. You can click on pre-check to see that everything is here, because maybe you, you need the loads, you need the fix, you need to miss the contacts, and so on. This tells you if something is, is weird. Then you go here and you say um, solve this, this sketch. Yeah, and then you can say, okay, you want to do on cloud, and then I have under credits, 95 will remain, so I don't want this. I will do this locally. So click on locally here, and then you can go. So once once you, you click on FAC here, you will see that some of the, the stuff are not uh, doable with, with, um, with local. You can read here in the help desk from Fusion. By the way, I will do it locally, right? So I push solve here, and now Fusion computes this this uh, simulation here. You can see the, the the results, yeah? And now here, guys, you have your, your results, okay? So you have to take care that the, the safety factor here, so if you see everything in blue, it's fine. You are 15 times higher than the safety safety factor. It's uh, so 15 times, it can hold 15 times more this, this, this load case, this aluminum. This scale that you see here is the adjusted scale. It's just to show you where the forces are. You can select actual deformation. So there is like no deformation. So this is the real deformation, but there is not. Yeah, you can see adjusted, which means with some amplification. So if you amplify this, See, you can see how this is going to be. So up to the point that this, of course, 
completely collapses and this this bends over here, right? So you can uh, see the different stress where the stress is the most. So you can see that the stress is mostly in this top part. You see this was the original height and now how it's, it's compressed over here. Yeah, uh, you can see the displacement. You can see the reaction force. You can see the strain. Yeah, and here it tells you where is the maximum strain of this. Um, you can see the contact pressure, where it is. It's among this, this circle over here and so on. So you can play with all this, these parameters. So, so far we are really safe. So if you want, you can uh, just say finish results. Then you're back here and you say, okay, please increase this to, so we put 5,000 kilos, uh, for example. Now it tells you the results are not comp uh, computed. If you go here, um, sorry, um, solve, solve, locally solve. Yeah, and then, uh, yeah, you can see. So uh, current, it tells you, uh, 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 you are almost reaching the safety factor. Here it tells you a minimum safety factor of three is common. And this tells you you are 2.84, so it's still okay, but you're almost close to the safety factor, okay? So you should increase the thickness of the aluminum or take something bigger and so on. Um, so guys, I have, uh, I will share with you this folder <coughs> where you can see some examples. Um, the shape optimization, um, I cannot do it because it will take my credits um, for it, unfortunately. Uh, so I'm going just to show you with a pre-existing example here. Um, so in this example, I have this shape here. I say this is the fixed point here. I say this is the load where I want to apply the, um, the force over here. And I also can say preserve some regions. So for example, I selected this region to be preserved. So we know the fixing point and the force, uh, but the preserving of the region is something spe specific to the shape optimization. So with this, I am saying to, to Fusion, you can do whatever you like with the rest, but you should keep this one as it is. So I want to have this shape here because maybe it has to fit to another piece, right? So the ones you compute the results, these are the result of the shape optimization. So this basically shows you that you can save tons of material here in case you 3D print this for metal, for example. No? Or, or here, or here, you don't need all these parts over here. And this tells you where the maximum force is, is, is applied and so on. So it's similar to the shape optimization, uh, to the, sorry, um, static stress simulation. Yeah? You can, uh, another important thing is you can expect, so you can go to a single point and you can see here, you know, how much is the force. So this is 0 0.5, uh, so 50% of the maximum force we can have. You have the maximum, you also have the maximum, for example. So this is a point probe uh, and so on. So this is the shape optimization. It's, it's really cool, but it's, yeah, now it's getting needed. Uh, if you want to know the aluminum profile simulation, I made this nice uh, example here. Um, so these aluminum are different standard, 40, 40, 30, 30, 40, 80, 80, 60, 60. And here you have, for example, POM, uh, acrylic, um, ABS or HDPE, other plastics. And here you have full metal, full metal, uh, yeah. So then here you can you can compare different different things. Of course, in this case, I just attach this as fixed here, and then these two roads are fixed, and the force is in the center of these profiles over here. Yeah, this is. Uh, let's look the materials just for curiosity. One is acrylic, acetal is POM, basically, and so here, and then the rest is uh, aluminium. Yeah, here uh, ABS plastic. Okay, and this was the, the simulation workbench. Uh, guys, do you have questions? More questions about the simulation? 
You're welcome. Okay, guys, last uh, last thing I want to show you very quickly is about the, the rendering. And uh, for this, we can go back in design and go back a couple of steps. Mm -hmm. And uh, so here we have some bodies. Yeah, we can maybe delete this, this other two bodies. So we have this, this, uh, these bodies over here. Um, let's apply some uh, appearance to them. So we go here and okay, this is uh, glossy aluminum. Um, this is a piece of engraved bamboo. Um, this is a piece of plastic. Um, um, this is a piece of glass, dark glass. This is light glass um, or medium color. But all of these are really, yeah. So we have all of this. Push close. We go to, to rendering. And first of all, guys, you can see that rendering changes your your view here. It has another way of displaying the objects. Yeah? So um, the first thing that you should do is to change the appearance if you need, but this we already have done it. So then the other thing you can do is the change the scene settings. Okay, guys, you can play with the light that you have. You can position the 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 light. A little bit the angle of the light you can play with the background you want to have environment solid um, you can change the color of the background um, as you want yeah I will uh, go back because now I don't know which color I was using design render oh no it stays okay so I have to reboot it okay so I will uh, Redo it so uh, scene setting color and so you can take maybe a light a light um, okay so here you have different other options you can have reflections or not look the reflections are on the bottom the cylinder is there for example the bamboo pipe is also there you can have perspective camera or orthographic camera for design I recommend you orthographic for um, rendering I recommend you perspective camera. You have the focal length, exposure, depth of field, blah, blah, other, other library. You also have environment a library here. You can change to sharp highlights, cool lights, grid lights. Um, you can be in a plaza here. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You can apply also this to the, to the faces here. So let's go back. Uh, yeah, I think I have to, no, it's okay. Okay, so you have different uh, options. Okay, so then um, you can have two different ways of rendering. Or you render it, and of course, guys, you can render it on the on the cloud. It requ requires credit, by the way. Uh, or you can render it locally. And uh, you can have different qualities. You can have draft, standard, final, excellent, for example. You can select the file type, like JPG. You can have the image size here. It can be whatever you want. Um, so here you have some uh, templates, web, mobile, print, um, video, formats, and so on. You can do, uh, you can use the format that you want, exposure, and so on. Uh, and then you can push on render. And then, for example, this will render as the 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 position is is now. I think somehow the the glass uh, got lost. I ah, know because I applied to this the okay the that. Uh, background, um, so sign, sign settings, and then, uh, and then we say cool light. Okay. Okay. So um, now we are back here. We have our transparent bodies, so we can go back to render. Usually, so I have a 12 core CPU in this computer uh, with hybrid trading. You should consider also the, the CPU that you have. Um, if you have a very good computer like this one. Then you can go crazy with the with the settings. You can say, okay, uh, eight megapixel um, quality will make it uh, almost excellent, or between final and excellent. 
uh, and you push render here and this will start to work so guys you have to take care that this will take your computer okay you can see now my CPU utilization is is like 100% you know it's it's 12 core 24 threads but it's like uh, going crazy for this so fusion it's highly uh, um, using parallel computation for this but really a lot and here you can see the the going on of, of the rendering so the rendering guys is filling time by time so this means that you can anytime stop the rendering and say this is good quality I want or you can keep rendering like like crazy so let's wait a minute Yeah, so a few seconds. Uh, yeah, my V final is too much of a quality. Maybe I can uh, stop the rendering now just for the uh, for the sake of the lecture. Yeah, stop rendering. Click again to confirm. And okay, they didn't take it. Now I should be taking it. And then close. Yeah, you need to wait still a little bit. It finalizes the rendering. Which is by the way here in the rendering gallery. Okay, let's wait that this thinks about it. Another thing that you can do, guys, is in canvas render. In canvas render, guys, will try to render the image in real time. So now, for example, the quality is so in four seconds I can re-render the image. So every time I zoom in, this will do real time rendering on what you're looking to. Yeah, and here you can select the, the quality of the rendering. So in this case, my computer is slow because it's still doing this rendering on the background somehow. Um, let's see if somehow I can... Uh, no. So let's see if my computer is still like going crazy. No, it's, it's not. Okay, so I can re-enable the in-canvas render and it should be fast. So every time you move your object, you can render. So this is rendering at this time you can increase the quality so every time you move it you're going to have your rendering uh, redone yeah yeah and it takes some time to to do it depends on the quality uh, that you want so it fills this these holes uh, slowly every time Okay, in Canvas rendering settings, yeah, you can make it fast maybe. So now, for example, it's much faster than before and gives you some quality since a few seconds. All right, guys, and then we can stop this rendering. This image over here is still not here for some reason okay some bug confusion so we will redo it um, this time we use final quality and we use a resolution which is uh, a little bit full HD full HD for example render and this re-renders the, the image and it should be now taking a few seconds to, to finish Guys, do you have questions, comments? That's correct. Yeah, uh, you need to. So here you can download your image, guys. This becomes a normal image. You have your computer, and uh, you go to download, and you you have your image here. Yeah, and you can zoom in. All right, I will stop recording.